Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be painting an apple and I've got my drawing here. However, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I was away last week in Victoria on Vancouver Island in Canada, which is where I live, and did a little shopping for my studio. So I thought I would do an unwrapping, so to speak, of some of the things I got. And the first one was uh, this little Winsor & Newton watercolor pad with a uh, ring binding, which is nice because you can flip it open. And it's cold pressed, 140 pound, 100% cotton paper. And I wanted to give that a try. I also wanted to have something that's, that's easy to carry around and, and good for small sketches. This is not really cooperating. Oh, it's perforated as well. So really nice paper. You can tell that it's cotton. It has a really nice soft feel to it. So I'm looking forward to using that. I got this one from Island Blue Print Company for $14.95. Before I start painting, I thought I would give you a little tour of the Opus Framing and Art Supply Store in Victoria. On the left we have shelving for full sheets of watercolor paper and then racks with sketchbooks and notebooks. After that, we've got the watercolor section, which is the, all the paints, and there are so many kinds, which is fabulous. Followed by pens, pens and more pens, lots of micron pens and packages, and then a close-up of some of the watercolors and the one that I chose to bring home, which I will talk about in a few minutes. I also got this Opus one, finest watercolor paper, and I was looking for this size in an Arches paper, but they didn't have the, the size. And so I asked one of the staff members and he said, this is almost exactly the same, or at least you know, just as good. So, and would and cost probably quite a bit less than the Arches would, which is sometimes important. And this, this is an Opus brand that they have made for their own stores. And they are not attached, they're just single papers. But there are, there's seven and a half by 11, 40 sheets, 100% cotton, acid-free, 140 pound paper from opusartsupplies.com. And you can order from them online. I'm, if this is not sponsored, it's just, I bought this myself. And I can't wait to start using this paper because it's a great size for me. Now, one of the other things I bought was a Lizard Crimson, this paint. And if you if you watched my video about filling up my new palette, you'll probably remember that I left a space for this one. It's a really dazzling red and I wanted to make sure I had one. So I bought it and between then and now, when I originally filled up this palette, I, I, I just put a little dab of colors in, but I discovered that that doesn't work for me. So I filled up all the little spaces here with the colors like I want them, which is lots of color so I can really s smoosh around my brushes. Now I'd like to show you what Alizarin Crimson looks like in practice because it's just such a gorgeous red. Isn't that pretty? Now one of the things I really like about it is that the color blooms really well when it, it's wet on wet. Now this is a bit messy, but it's all I have at the moment. So if I drop in a little bit of alizarin, you can see how it blooms just like it makes an instant flower. So if you have a chance to get some, I recommend it because it's a lovely color. And there's a couple of other things that I bought. One is this Factus Oval Eraser, which I only tried once and uh, can't really comment on yet, except that it's kind of cute. And the other thing is, I bought this Fimo in a very pale pink because I found a pair of earrings in a shop in Cowichan Bay that I really quite liked. And when I had a close look at them, I thought, you know, I could probably make those. And, you know, the ones in the shop were quite pricey. So instead of around $70, $75, I bought this. I have jewelry findings anyway, because I like to make things. And I'm going to use it using Fimo and make my own. 
So for today's painting, I'm using this as my reference photo. I'm going to try and get these beautiful gradient washes to work together, and I hope I can succeed. So let's begin. I'm starting here by just wetting the entire apple. And this paper is quite absorbent, which is not really what I want, but it's what I have at the moment. So the trick with wet and wet is that it can be too dry or too wet very easily. Tipping this up so that the red runs down into the yellow. Dry brush, or it's not dry, but it's had all the water squeezed out. So I'm just pulling it along here to make it obvious where the light is. Now, while the apple is drying, because it's actually quite wet, I'm going to work on these leaves. Now that my apple is completely dry, I'm going to do another layer and hopefully fill in some of this area here, give it a little bit more dimension. So this is always kind of tricky because watercolor is a little bit unpredictable and you can end up where you don't really want to go. For example, here it's picking up the red, which I don't want it to do. deeper color along here. I do want it to bleed into the color below. And then I have to pick some of it up because I really don't want that there. yellow green and then a sap green along the bottom. Oh, this is not turning out how I want it to. I need to pick up some of this water and this isn't red enough. I want it redder. Notice how I'm lifting the paper. Just picking up some of this wetness. In order to get it to stop spreading, I took it and held it in front of a big fan and turned the paper around like this as I watched it. 
and I think it turned out really well. Now I'm going to just lift a little bit of the red along here. I'm going to add a little bit more color in here and then just bleed out the edges. To do that, I take all the color out of my brush so that there's just water in it, but not a lot. Now I'm in danger of overworking it, so I'm going to stop. For contrast, I'm just going to put a little bit of a background in here, and to start with, I'm just going to wet this. This is a number six brush, and you can find something similar in the link below. is a mix of cerulean blue and permanent blue violet. There, I think I will leave it at that. It's a fairly simple painting, except for the wet, the wet on wet in here, which comes with practice. Please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you can be notified when I've got a new video. And I think you might also like these videos. And I'll see you next time.